James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Oh. Greetings, everyone. You shouldn't have my scarf, too. No. This scarf is strictly for fashion. Uh, mine is for warmth. I don't feel cold because, well, I was, I felt, I was freezing um, this morning, but right now outside here in northeastern New Jersey, it feels like Cinco de Mayo. 59. 59. That's Cinco de Mayo enough for me. Next best thing to having the wonderful Cinco de Mayo food and frozen margaritas. Now, uh, <coughs> for those of you, before anyone criticizes uh, and asks questions about my right eye uh, looking differently from my left eye, I had a procedure. I had a, op a, a ocular procedure done on my right eye and it, it got swollen mm -hmm. but it is getting better so before I hear crap like some teabagger posted something uh, uh, under one of our old videos when the when the camera people used to be on that side of the studio if you know what I mean and down yes yeah yeah and there was uh, <coughs> some remark like uh, <laughs> ah, ah, you 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 don't like uh, you don't like conservatives. Ah, well, how how how's your uh, 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 how how well did uh, did your Hillary do? Hey, she's not my Hillary. I I said I told I I typed. I didn't support her. That I was a Bernie. Nice. I was a Bernie crat. I'm with a Democratic Socialist. I didn't support Hillary. Mm. You know, I mean, but they they don't they don't give you anything scientific anything intelligent it's right. always a very a very petty uh, uh you know, thing get under your skin push your buttons try to agitate you name calling kind of thing that you never get any intellect and speaking of a lack of intellect i don't know if the trump administration is the world's largest mental institution uh -huh. or the world's largest reality show but after hearing uh, his press conference not too long ago two days ago I think. two days ago I didn't know whether or not to to uh, laugh profusely or to shake my head in embarrassment mm -hmm. and shame so I I mean I'm sure many of you listen to it and uh, you know uh, he picks and chooses from the press who he wants to hear from he cuts you off if you if you begin to criticize him he calls you fake news if you if you criticize him and if you if you compliment him and uh, you you tell him nice things then he loves you if you kiss his ass he loves you uh, it sounds a lot it sounds a lot uh, <clears throat> excuse me it sounds a lot like a monarch to me. Well, I told you, man, before, his mother treated him like a king. He's got a gold toilet. He's got gold all around yeah, his Yeah, but when he shits, he's not whatever. shitting gold bricks. I mean... Well, uh, he believes himself to be a king. He, he, shit, he, uh, he deposits 24-carat uh, gold-plated turds. Yeah, well, you know, he doesn't want to hear criticism, but you know what? The He's dirt, making a lot of it. <laughs> no matter how much you try to hide the dirt, it will uh, always find a way to show itself as it builds up and it starts to stink and yeah. starts to to come to the surface of the of the water and, and it'll sh it all shows itself eventually. It doesn't drain the swamp. No. Now, well, when you drain the swamp, in the case of the Trump administration, you have nothing but bottom feeders left. <laughs> now, getting getting uh, uh, to the bottom feeders and to the, uh, the Trump cabinet, you have people that are quitting, are resigning. You have people that are getting fired 
by Donald Trump. You have people that refuse to work for Donald Trump and the, and the Trump administration. So, uh, hey, it's <laughs> almost like Celebrity Apprentice. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Right. So, in other words, they ha people have to walk on eggshells. They they cannot make any decisions for the the department that they're running. They have to they have to run everything by Donald Trump before they make any decisions. Like like they have no managerial responsibilities whatsoever. He has to give them the okay for everything. And uh, pretty much people don't want to work for his administration. And uh, and and he. Um, he even pissed off Republicans. Now, um, but what do we have to look forward to if it wasn't for, if Donald Trump uh, was removed? Then we have the lunatic, zealot, evangelical, freakazoid, religious nut Mike Pence. That makes no sense. Um, so. This is it. Now, I, I would like to make a statement that I, I hate Republicans stinking guts more than ever before. Now more than ever before because they are, um, like the late great George Carlin said, they, uh, after they steal everything else from we the people, they, uh, they want to come after your, our Social Security. They want to cut Medicare. They they um, apparently uh, uh, the douchebag Muppet face scumbag uh, Paul Ryan and 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 uh, the turtle face McConnell. They have no replacement for the Affordable Care Act. They have no replacement for uh, anything that services the poor. And for that matter, the middle class, because the middle class are not doing too well. You know, I mean, their taxes went up even higher, from what I understand, or they're going to go up higher. Uh, but, you know, Congress keeps on giving himself that automatic raise. And, uh, you know, I guess they give themselves a review at the same time. No, no. They don't give themselves no a review. No reviews. No, they give themselves a review. They get it, no matter what. They get it. Yeah, automatic, no, no, whether they, they do nothing in less than part-time hours or not. They there is no merit. No merit. Meritocracy in the you know, U.S. government. Right. They, no have, they have arranged it so it's automatic. The, uh, the, uh, the stealing, it's like if a person steals company time, and they get in trouble for that. The stealing of taxpayers' money to give themselves raises that they did not earn. That's right. They did not earn any, anything they get. Um, well, they didn't do any work under uh, 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 Obama. Well, Donald Trump says he inherited a, a, a big, a mess. A big yes. mess from Obama. Ah. A mess? A mess. Well, he also said that 306... Uh, 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 the, uh, oh man, it flew out of my head. You know, the, uh, the votes that he needs to be president, he yeah. got 306. He said that was the highest of any president of all time. <laughs> really? Reagan got more, and two other, and, and uh, Clinton, I believe, and another president got more than 306. Well, uh, Donald Trump, uh, will has, I think he's done it already, change history, the history of the American presidency, because when when foreigners, when other countries <clears throat> think of the American presidency, they will not think of anyone else but Donald Trump, because he is the first well, that's what, he likes to, that's what he likes to be, the first of, of, about everything, the largest crowd gatherer yeah, of not, all but, time. But, it, but it, it'll, be, it'll be the first in their mind in, in terms of infamy, not in terms of anything positive. Hmm. But they will, uh, he single-handedly embarrass uh, the U.S. presidency. Uh, now, um, 
you know, it sounds nice when he says, let me uh, do my job and, uh, and fix the mess. He says the White House is running better than ever before. Finely tuned instrument. Finely tuned, I guess, well-oiled machine. But how can it be that, how can it be working that well if he keeps on appointing these uh, uh, pro-corporate, uh, uh, blood-sucking, uh, uh, multi-billionaires uh, mm -hmm. that don't give a shit about the poor or the middle class. Mm -hmm. So how, how could things be working that perfectly if, if it's going to be um, curtains for the poor and the middle class? It's well, going to be doomsday for them. That may have been the plan. Oh, you mean why like, wouldn't that be the plan? Like Republic, I'm a Republican, like Republicans calling it the Clean Air Act, uh, or whatever. No, well, you, Republicans went. Yeah, exactly. When they say something, well, when they want to do something, they cover it up. They got, they call it something else, so the people don't get wise. Right. So, like okay. in, like in the terms of immigration, in terms of immigration, I think there's a little more involved. Than just deporting illegal. Yeah, they thought they were going to get away immigrants. with, you know, with just saying Muslims, and that would bring the hate to the surface of right. their 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 uh, their base. Right, and then they right? blame, and then they, they ran into the Constitution. Then they blame the Mexican. They they blame the Mexicans for all their problems. Right, coming we're talking over the about all the all the the rednecks uh, that vote Republican and coming over the border. But you, I know, and then there's the. Uh, the teabagger comments online about uh, towards the African American community saying, "Well, if they don't do anything wrong, and 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 they 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 speak to the policeman uh, uh, with with respect, then nothing bad's going to happen." In other words, what they're blaming all of the uh, the killings of unarmed uh, blacks by the police. They're they're blaming it on the blacks. Yeah. So they're blaming it. They're not. They're not. They're not acknowledging the racial profiling. No. They're blaming it on the blacks. They're blaming everything on the Muslims. They're blame, blaming everything on, on the Mexicans. Blame. But they all, all these people that Republicans are after, aside from the poor, uh, have one thing in common. They are all people of color. Yeah. They share that one thing in common. They're people of color. Mexicans, Mexicans, Muslims, African Americans. So, uh, you know, they can sugarcoat it all they want, but it, a pattern always forms with Republicans. And uh, when they tell you everything is uh, uh, peachy keen, uh, uh, fine and dandy, hunky dory, it, hunky dory, it means that uh, they are getting away with something, with <laughs> something underhanded. Oh yeah. And uh, stealing money that doesn't belong to them, like Social Security, is extremely uh, underhanded. And well, the Affordable Care Act, which will leave many poor people dying from their illness. Well, now, Trumpy, Trumpy Baby said he was not going to touch Social Security and Medicare. But Paul Ryan and the guys and the girls are. Now, Paul Ryan got something through the other day. He snuck it through. Underhandedly, yes. He, he snuck, snuck it through. It through. Uh, I believe it has something to do with, the, you know, with the cheating Social Security recipients out of their money. Either maybe it had something to do with the raising the, the age or whatever. Retirement age went up. Yeah. And all of that is stealing. Yeah. As it stands, and, 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 and with Medicare, they keep saying Medicare is going broke, but the actuaries say that Medicare is good till 2028. Mm -hmm. So, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, de it's definitely f uh, far from being low in cash. And of course, Social Security is uh, Treasury bonds. Yeah, well, they, well, in it's, that file cabinet that WG was now, going in. Remember? Now, yeah, when they raise the retirement age and they and they want to cut Social Security and Medicare, what that ensures is that more uh, senior citizens that um, uh, will rely on a fixed income will drop dead prematurely. I think that's part of their uh, depopulation of the poor plan.
Well, it's of the Republicans. Redi- it's also a redistribution of income upward. Like Bernie Sanders okay. says. Like Bernie Sanders says all the time. I don't know why Bernie Sanders keeps on saying no to a new third progressive party. If, if he thinks he's going to put on a spandex uh, Batman or Superman <laughs> suit with a cape and he's going to... Captain re- America! Captain America and he's going to rescue the Democratic Party from being establishment and corrupt. I hope he doesn't hold his breath for any period of time. It ain't going to happen. Because I, I, they're not, they don't look like they're embracing the most progressive people, mm. the Democratic Party. So, uh, uh, you know, it's like, uh, for some reason, he, you see, uh, Bernie Sanders and Jeff Weaver, they have that organization now called Our Revolution. Uh-huh. Now, if you're asking, if you're hitting people up for money now for Our Revolution, which they are because they email me, yeah. if you're hitting people up for donations, like when you were campaigning, then you might as well convert Our Revolution into a third progressive party, and this way all the Bernie Kratz of 2016 will jump on board and I will register as a Bernie bird party whatever the hell you want to call it and you know people will feel like they're donating to something real something tangible you know our revolution does not hold any political weight substance it's just a bunch of people protesting you know what I mean? It, it's not. It's not a force to be reckoned with like a political party is. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's just. Co- it's just something called our revolution. It's like me forming a club called My Shillelagh. Yeah. Hey, that sounds a little risque, right? Like, My Shillelagh, please donate to this worthy organization. I mean, that's it. And, uh, you know, um, before I continue, everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Crapitalism in a Conch, conch Shell. Let's see if Neptune's there. I will. I will do a moment of silence. Uh, I pretty much said it all for this week. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. What else can you say? Why be redundant, King Neptune says. If if I already said it all practically in one breath. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, the lucky bells. Oh, I forgot. Hold on. All right, I'll see you. I mean, I'll see you. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. Lucky seven bells for our show. Uh, President's Day. Big fucking deal. Ah, President's yes. Day Monday. weekend. Big fucking deal. President's Day. Seven lucky bells. Let's have a moment of silence. Um, recently, um, um, professional uh, wrestler and uh, a female bodybuilder Nicole Bass died. Also, George the Animal Steel passed away. Mr. Jim Myers passed away. And also, the Russian bear, Ivan Koloff, all three and passed away, died. And Richard Hatch, Apollo, from Battlestar Galactica. Okay, okay, I remember With him. With Lauren Green, remember? Okay. Lauren Green. Richard Hatch. So let's have a moment of silence for all of them. And of course, of course, uh, uh, not too long ago, someone I knew personally, uh, the Superfly Jimmy Snooker, too, uh, he will not be forgotten. Uh, uh, too <coughs> many, too many of them have died. You know, some of them prematurely. Anyway, moment of silence. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it's... Um, A lot it, of celebrities have died this year. Yeah. Now, it's... It, it, it's we're a little bit past... The middle of February, correct? <clears throat> yep. And I feel I I feel that spring is in the air with this weather. 
If, if we don't have, if this isn't global warming, I don't know what is. Definitely, uh, something's going on. You know, yeah, well, you know, yeah, a lot of people got the wrong idea what global warming is. Global warming will be uh, 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 winters. What? Cold. Excess cold. Well, you have El Nino and La Nina. Well, that's that's winds. Which is the temperature? No, it's the temperature too of the oceans. But from the winds. Yeah. You know that's what that is. But um, global war global warming, you're gonna you're gonna end up with the nuclear winters for Christ's sake. Yeah. You know? Another ice age. Uh, Remember the movie Ice? <laughs> another problem is. Um, yeah, I remember the uh, horror movie called Ice Spiders, too. They're spiders. No, I don't remember. They're that. Arctics. They're giant Arctic alien spiders that kill you, that attack you, and sink their fangs into you. What do they, what do they inject? Antifreeze into the. <laughs> I don't know. I'm only guessing. <laughs> little 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 levity with my jingle bell. <laughs> my Festivus bells. <laughs> That's what I'll call them. I call them Festivus bells. Coin that phrase. Okay, now, um, oh gosh, what was I going to say? I have no idea. You know, there was, uh, at, in the doctor's office this morning. Yes. You okay? I'm looking where my pad went. It should be stay there. Well, I don't want anything in the way, you know. Well, on my printer, it's not in the way. I mean, visually. I didn't touch really? anything there. Well, it was there. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I didn't take anything from there. All right, anyway. What was I saying? Oh, I was in the doctor's office. I was, um, they had the big screen TV on. And there's this uh, woman, this fat woman, white woman, who is a coupon expert. Uh -huh. Well, that's what my grandparents used to say. Q coupon. Coupon, coupon, coupon expert. Coupon. And and she was with this uh, obese family, uh -huh. and uh, they were uh, doing. They were all working out together, yeah. uh, doing, trying, attempting to do exercises. They had a uh, a homemade uh, barbell uh, made up of a broomstick with two bags of uh, canned goods on each side of it. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, it's re ingenuity. It's, it's resistance. Yeah. They use their imagination. Mm -hmm. The muscles, the muscles don't care if it's a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers. Resistance is resistance. I don't care if it's the designer equipment that costs thousands of dollars, high tech, state of the art. Or if it's a, a freaking boulder that you're doing presses and squats with, the yeah, muscles, or, don't, you know, body don't care. Anyway, a gallon of water. There you go. There were well, a gallon of water is eight pounds. There you go. You know, if it's you fill dumbbell. it with sand, it's more. If you fill it with uh, lead buckshot, it's there even it more, a lot more. Anyway, after they work out, uh, she she goes shopping with them, and what are they putting in the carts? Cases of soda. <laughs> Seven up, uh, where, so I, I made everybody laugh in the waiting room. I says, you know what? They're working out at home as a family. They're exercising, and they need soda like they need a friggin' hole in the head. They, they, they exercising, is not, it doesn't, it's not going to do a damn thing. Mm -hmm. Just like these guys I used to know, they used to brag, they go to the gym, they have a gym membership. Yeah. As soon as they walk out of the gym, they light up a cigarette, they start chain smoking. Or if they chain smoke, the uh, booze hounds chain smoke, recreational drugs and steroids. Ooh. Don't even bother to go to go to a uh, health food store and get supplements. Don't waste your time. Don't even waste your time in a gym. Yeah, if you're exactly. not gonna do it right, if you're not gonna, if you're gonna talk, and then they'll complain. Yeah, they'll complain. Don't talk to talk. In other words, yeah, don't talk the talk if you're not walking the walk. You, you, if you're not living the lifestyle, you're, you're just, all those supplements are uh, a total waste. Mm -hmm. You know, well, what, what, uh, years ago, uh, I think Jack Lane used to call them bedpan bullets. 
Yeah, they just go right through. <laughs> <laughs> right. But well, anyway. You know, a lot of people don't understand that uh, most supplements, of course, are to be used with food. Food comes first. Yeah. Are to be, you know, they are part of the food. Well, not that only, even the late great Dr. Robert Atkins, Robert C. Atkins, used to say, don't get hung up on your supplements if your diet is wrong. Uh, bingo! Your diet is the most important thing. And you're not supposed to be taking your supplements before you eat a meal. You're supposed to take them after a meal unless it's specified. Yeah, if it's like a... Uh, uh, DHEA. Uh, uh, ones that take between meals. Right. Uh, colostrum, uh, DHEA. Uh, uh, there are certain supplements... Probiotics. That are right. That are are recommended. You take them on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, your food is number one. Mm -hmm. And if you're eating a high carb um, diet uh, consisting of um, chemicals and you know uh, hydrogenated oil, which is carcinogenic, if you're putting toxins in your body, mm -hmm. you're just wasting your time with the vitamins. I you know, knew uh, I, I knew a personal case of a person who drank sodas every day, and of course, <clears throat> once once he stopped just the sodas alone, he lost twenty pounds. Well, isn't there isn't there also sodium? Uh, In a certain the amount of sodium besides I'm the sugar. I'm sure there is, but seventeen teaspoons of sugar. Well, you know when you when you cut out carbs and sugar, you know refined carbs, which is sugar. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that happens is uh, all the uh, the water, the the fluid retention the, uh, yeah. that your body, all the fluid your body's holding on to because of the high carbs, that all flushes out. Yeah, that's the first thing that occurs, and then of course you go into ke ketosis. Now, someone from orthodox medicine says be very careful with ketosis, because if the human body does not get a certain amount of uh, certain milligrams of, of, of sugar, of, of carbs, that the brain will shut down. But fat is the brain food. That's, the, that's what I was trying to explain. <laughs> like they, they, they did a lab experiment where they offered, um, I don't know if it was lab animals or a human cell. In other words, anytime you give the human body a choice between carbs for energy and fat for energy. The body always would always prefer fat over carb. It's, it's more efficient, right? No, carbs over fat. It's easier. But what does your body then is? it begins to take uh, burn the fat for energy? Yes. Right. Yeah. As a sec, a secondary. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's why when you uh, let's say go into uh, the uh, the Atkins diet or something of that right. nature, you use the keto sticks to find out how much ketosis you're in and blah blah blah. Yeah. And you can measure it and you can play with it and and you can lose what you want and that's it. You dip it in urine like a home pregnancy test if it turns violet or purple the the the, the deep the, the more the more purple it is the more fat your body is burning for energy and right. you can find them at any pharmacy correct yes keto sticks yeah. with an x at the end yeah. keto sticks and uh and that's it if if it's not turning at least violet well then you're consuming too many carbs exactly and you can you you know, I mean, you can, somebody's, uh, let's say, uh, ingesting 80 carbs a day or something like that. You can bring them down to 20. Are you losing on 20? If you're losing on 20, fine. Yeah. I always have my clients uh, for the first week take, uh, um, uh, um, um, keep a log of everything uh, they, for everything at least they a week. eat. At least the week. Just to get an idea yes. of what their eating habits are, where they're at. Yes. So now you know what to emit. Yeah. And what to reduce and what mm -hmm. to increase. You know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, anyway, uh, let us uh, sink our teeth into these readings.
we are still doing very well on time despite um, our uh, long windedness um, uh, I had a, a consumer tip um, that I wanted to share um, well of course I'm, I'm now using LED lights at home and I'm, I'm very happy with them um, there was another consumer tip um, speaking of health my kefir grains they're the large it seems like the larger they get and the more more harder they become and more yellowish they become the thicker the uh, the yogurt that it produces the thicker the kefir and, and I noticed that the kefir is now becoming thicker almost like a store-bought yogurt and it, it lasts forever if you take care of them um, and they also have water kefir grains for vegans out there um, and then I made my pancakes I made the uh, the vegan uh, multi-grain pancakes that <laughs> came out excellent and and in place of eggs you use flaxseed meal uh, with milk and eh, you could use a cup of milk but you know what there's so much calcium in quinoa and things like that you know you don't really need the milk but you gotta make sure you pulverize everything into a fine powder um, let me see uh, I uh, getting back to cookware uh, you know the Gotham uh, steel pan did not live up to its uh, infomercial but the copper chef might and I see differences that you get with the copper chef pan so if anybody out there purchased the the whole set with the square pan feel free to email us and let us know if you like it uh, if you're unhappy if you love it you can always go to Amazon actually I think Amazon is the only place and Yelp mm -hmm. Those are the only two organizations I know of online that um, where you can leave reviews. I don't know of any other review uh, organization. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think, there's a company that really ticked me off. Uh, oh, uh, um, uh, Steven, the guy that had the problems for months and months and months and months with the yeah. welfare and social security. Well, finally, uh, Steven's going to uh, have his first uh, whopping payment Wait. that is supposed to be direct deposited in his account. And uh, and the, the, the idiot at Social Security Administration screwed up on his uh, routing number and account number. Nice. So he got a letter saying they can't deposit. So he calls them up. He goes over the number again. He gives them the right number. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, he said that the woman that he had an argument with, she kept on cutting him off. She was insisting that that he give her all the numbers that are on the bottom of the Let's check. Check. No, you don't use all the numbers, no, you idiot. You only use certain numbers for the routing number yeah. and the account number yeah you don't give them every single digit zero or whatever that's on the check yeah. stupid ass you know the I tell you these state and federal government workers so anyway she goes okay she goes uh, got it yeah. we'll deposit it right away hasn't deposited yet hey <laughs> they sure hate to 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 part with that money huh <laughs> But if you were a corporate CEO, you would sure have a direct deposit, like in a nanosecond, I bet. Oh, sure. You know, but... Uh, oh, sure. You know, hey, you, you people out there, man, you, 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 Americans are, are beyond pathetic. I'm talking about the ones that supported uh, Hillary and Donald Trump. You are so fucking pathetic. It, it, I, words alone cannot describe how... Um, brain cell deficient you truly are mm -hmm. I mean uh, uh, Bernie Sanders supposedly with the rigging he got 46% of the popular vote 
But you see, this might be a problem with a third progressive party. If you still have the Electoral College and the um, uh, and all this crap and the um, the, um, the super delegates with the Democrats, and you don't use the popular vote, then a progressive. Uh, and then you still, if you still allow gerrymandering, the, uh -huh. the, the progressive candidate will get fucked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your hunch on that, Doc? Of course, Doc. And that's why they get. That's why they form into parties. And that's why they gerrymand. Gerrymand to maintain power. It, it, okay? It's a form of rigging gerrymandering. Well, of course it is. It's rigging. It's not an amphibian like a salamander. It's a form of rigging. That's right. Yeah. It rigs your your party, where your people are, and it, and, and so that basically only your people are voting for you. Voter suppression. Well, there's no. Let's say they, they try to avoid having any Democrats in your gerrymandered district. Right, and they make sure that where the Democrats are concentrated, they will have a very difficult time traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Traveling, like Jesse Ventura explained what they did in Minnesota, how they, they split up the districts, and, mm -hmm. and the, the people that vote Democrat, they would have a great deal of difficulty mm -hmm. traveling to where they had a vote. Yeah. It's yeah. all rigged. Yeah. All right, go ahead. As the nation develops further into Donald Trump's presidency, there have been mul multiple calls for action, with the most current being the Day Without Immigrants. Oh, jeez. The campaign in support of millions of immigrants, both illegal and not, sought to take action and spread awareness of the importance of immigrants. Well, the crops in, in, in southern farms are rotting away right now because all the immigrant uh, farm workers, they, they took off when uh, Donald Trump started uh, with the deportation. They, 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 ran, they ran off the farm. They vanished. So now all the crops are rotting away. Boycott. That's what it is. The advocates of this movement call for people to not go to work and to reject commercial spending for the day. That's the way to do it. The importance of this call to action was to demonstrate the importance and impact of this, of immigrants, excuse me, of immigrants that they have on labor and the economy. It was a direct response to Trump's plans. The president's call to deport millions of illegal immigrants has created a strong and innovative counter movement to demonstrate the vitality of immigrants in America. The voices of these marginalized people are screaming for representation and protection while being muzzled by internal racism and national inclusion. Fake news, fake news. You can't. No, no. You, must, <laughs> you, you, you are not allowed. You are not allowed. You are not allowed to ask me any questions. You represent fake news. Nope. Shut up. You. I am doing a great job. The White House is a well-oiled machine. Thanks mm -hmm. to me. Yes. That you can, you can light a candle to a statue of me. You certainly are allowed to do that mm -hmm. in worship. I want to see what, uh, I didn't see Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live uh, last Saturday. They, they went on some kind of hiatus. I don't know. I hope I remember tonight, but last night I watched uh, uh, Captain America on the Sci-Fi Channel. Oh, uh, by the way, if you missed Saturday Night Live, the, uh, the uh, but they don't play the entire segment. No. You got to look around for it. Um, on YouTube. I had a hard time finding the entire segment. Mm. The, the one who plays uh, Sessions is funny. The one who plays... Uh, Spicer. Um, uh, spicy. Melissa Spicer. Is, oh, she's funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, she... Oh, she's really, really funny. Spicer. Uh, um, they're still deciding on who will play Bannon. I hope it's Rosie O'Donnell. 
because she will generate more heat than anyone else. <laughs> Getting back at him, yes. At, with Donald Trump on Twitter, with the Twitter mania. Oh, yeah. Twitter mania and, and him going... That'll get him up at 3 in the morning. Rosie O'Donnell playing Bannon. Oh. <laughs> I absolutely did not believe the President's news conference that I just witnessed. Donald Trump is still campaigning. He almost never finishes a sentence and can't complete a thought. Even anticipating a serious address to any situation confronting our country is an exercise in frustration and futility. The White House is in such disarray and our leader cannot articulate a single positive thought or policy. He hates the media, immigrants, facts, former President Obama, and anyone who endeavors to bring some sanity and truth into our lives. How long before other leaders put a stop to this? By the way, yeah, he said, I inherited a mess from Obama. Oh, and Obama didn't inherit a real mess from G.W. Yeah, Bush. Yes, and he cut the deficit by two-thirds. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and then he says uh, during the press conference, you think Hillary Clinton would be tougher on Russia than me? What, are you kidding me? <laughs> he had to bring her up. He said, I said it during the campaign, I will be tough uh, foreign policy. But because they saw a, a Russian spy ship off, off the... Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut, was it? Yeah. He said he uh, people would want me to uh, shoot it out of the water. Oh, gee, that will be smart. Uh, if he did that, we'd have, we'd be World War Three. <laughs> well, he did admit that Russia is a, a nuclear superpower, and, and so are we. Well, you, they, you can't just... <laughs> go off half cock doing things like that. Yeah, well. You know, I mean, look, Putin is not a fool and he's not stupid. You know, you you can you can have meetings with him and make nice nice, but you know, he's gonna he's gonna protect Mother Russia. You know, he's gonna uh, do what he does. He, I mean, he was a KGB man, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. So big deal. What are they, what are they gonna find? What are, what are they? What, what are they, the, they were looking at uh, the submarine base in New London, Connecticut, maybe. That's where the American. Who what? Well, the the American uh, the United States submarine base is in uh, Groton, 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 New Groton London. Connecticut. It's near Mystic Seaport. It's near near the Rhode Island border. Hmm. Yeah, that's where the that's the big Kahuna of the submarine base uh, for the U.S. You know, I who the hell knows? Mar uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Red October, the uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean Connery. Yeah. Denzel Washington too. As a former and current business owner, I recognize the challenges women face in business. However, I take exception to the writer's statement that Ivanka Trump is being judged unfairly. If Ivanka and Donald Trump had separated her business from his administration, I would agree that their, her business should be judged separately. I agree, I agree with that, yeah. Posting pictures of Ivanka Trump sitting at the Resolute Desk between the Presidents of the United States and Canada, Donald Trump's tweets condemning Nordstrom and Kellyanne Conway's unethical commercial for Ivanka Trump are just a few examples of how this administration is blurring the lines between government and corporate marketing. Well, um uh, Mel Melania Trump, Melania, Melania, Melania Trump uh, was trying to use her first lady status uh, in uh, marketing some products, and they and they put a, uh, somebody or some um, 
uh, it, it was stopped. Let's put it that way. It was it yeah, was well. stopped. You can't you can't do that. It's, yeah, well, somebody better tell Trump that. You gotta have that blank trust. Blind trust or get the, you gotta separate yourself from the business. Yeah, you got. You can't give it to your son though. A oh, big deal. You know. Give it to your Why, son. Why you, you can't talk to your son in the bathroom and help him with the uh, business uh, oh, problem? Where, where Fonzie used to have his office on happy days. <laughs> the Fonz used to call it his office, the the men's room. Uh, What's go. to stop him from whispering to his son of in, in the men's room? Nothing. With the dryer going. Nothing. The hand dryer, so there's no. Uh, yeah, nothing could stop him. Come on, give me a break. Um, you know, um, it's very easy for Trump to make decisions if his children are running the business. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, when did you know that when his sons go on business trips, uh, the taxpayers have to have to pay for the uh, security, uh, secret, yeah. the Secret Service, the security, yeah, has to go with him on business trips. And how many business trips? How many uh, vacations has he taken already? Oh, he's taken them. Yeah, he's going to break George Bush's uh, yeah. uh, 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 amount. Yeah, and didn't he already break the uh, the play to pay Hillary Clinton play to pay, pay to play play? I don't know. You don't uh, hear much about the uh, uh, GOP money coming in anymore. You know? yeah. But I mean, it, it's not the taxpayer's problem that his kids have to go on a business trip. Well, why did, why, did, I mean, they're supposed to be separated from the business. They're not minors. Hey, I mean, let me ask you a question. When Ronald Reagan was president, his sons were growing up, right? Yeah. Did they have the Secret Service? Yeah. Around them? Yeah. Okay. And then, you know... They don't go on a, a taking vacation. And then, you know, he yeah. said when his son, um, Barron, is at, uh, out of school, whenever that's going to be, then they will move into the White House. Meanwhile, they're going to ring up a bill. <laughs> a huge bill. Yeah, they've already done it. Yeah, Mayor... Uh, and Bill, it shall continue. Mayor Bill de Blasio is... Uh, he's huh. pissed off at a lot of things. As of late, House Republican leaders sketched broad outlines of a replacement for Barack Obama's health care law and left rank and file GOP members at odds and questioning details and timing of how the G GOP intends to deliver on its long promised alternative. Alternative. Die, drop dead. That's the Unrealistic best. may be a wrong, strong word, but it is a super large task. Representative Mark Walker, Republican North Carolina, said when asked about past GOP promises to quickly deliver legislation repealing the Affordable Care Act. We're getting there. We're getting closer. Yeah, to, to screwing the poor. House Speaker Paul Ryan told journalists after the closed door meeting that after Congress's upcoming weekend recess, week long recess, by the way, they're in recess right now. Recess? Till after President's Day. Where do they do in recess? Same thing they do when they're working. <laughs> they, they have uh, uh, they have martinis shaken, not stirred. Well, it, it, theoretically, they're all at their own homes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why uh, <laughs> Mitch McConnell had to had a, uh, take off uh, really quickly from the hecklers, from the protesters <coughs> in Kentucky, and, and 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 then he found more protesters at his home. <laughs> We intend to introduce legislation to repeal and replace Obamacare. But he provided no details. 
among the options discussed at a closed-door meeting of Republicans was repealing some or all of the $1.1 trillion in taxes over 10 years that Obama's overhaul imposed to help finance its expansion of health coverage. In its place, Ryan is proposing taxing the value of high-cost health insurance provided by employers, an idea that is certain to draw opposition from some Republicans who have long refused to vote for such tax increases. According to a document distributed to lawmakers and obtained by the American press, excuse me, the Associated Press, Republicans would phase out the expansion of Medicaid to additional poor people that Obama's law enacted. 31 states received extra federal money for doing that. During the phase-out period, the other 19 states would also receive additional money. Eventually, states would be given a choice of receiving either a lump sum payment of federal funds or an amount that varies based on the number of Medicaid beneficiaries they have. Instead of expanding a broken program, Republicans instead want to put states in charge of their Medicaid program. Medicaid remains among the most contentious parts of the GOP plan. Yeah, they always want the GOP. Uh, the Republicans always want to leave more to the states and eliminate the federal government involvement in everything, except military. Yeah. <clears throat> With bottle battles putting putting states against each other, sure to come as details of their legislation are decided. Republicans would eliminate the tax penalties that Obama's law imposes on people who don't buy insurance. And the subsidies the government provides to most people buying policies on the online marketplaces the statute established. Buying policies, yeah, with deregulated companies, wonderful. In their place? There would be refundable tax credits and health savings accounts people could use to help afford coverage. Proposals Democrats have mocked as inadequate. Are these credits going to uh, amount to enough money to pay such premiums? No. 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 Refundable credits mean that even people with low or no income would receive checks from the IRS. That has drawn opposition from conservative Republicans who say that system invites fraud. Health Secretary Tom Price, until last week himself a member of the House, addressed the lawmakers and told them President Donald Trump would give them strong backing during the effort. According to Representative Bill Flores, Republican of Texas, he also told them that the administration wants the House to introduce legislation before Trump produces his own package. Some Republicans have been eager for the White House to advance a proposal first because they are leery of supporting something that ends up not getting Trump's backing. Thursday's closed-door meeting came with Congress about to start a weekend, a week-long recess. That will send lawmakers home to energized voters, mostly Democrats, who have crammed town hall meetings to complain about GOP efforts to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Lawmakers are eager 
to have something to show their constituents. Yeah, I, 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 I see and hear that uh, at the town meetings the Republicans are having a bad time. People are on their asses about the Affordable Care Act once they're finding out what it really is. It's Obamacare, which they hate. But they like the Affordable Care Act. They, they it's hate the same it. thing. They hate it because the word Obama is right. in it. Right, exactly. These, well, these are the rednecks. That's it. The ones that are on it and don't even know it. <laughs> oh my God. I don't want no Obama care. We don't want no commie pinko or uh, Obama care from the black man that was in the White House. We don't want no bummer care. Oh, oh, what's that again? Affordable Care Act? Oh. Yeah, which do you prefer? Oh, that Take one. Affordable Care Act. Yeah, I like that one. Now you see me, I have eye, I had eye surgery uh, <coughs> yesterday morning and I'm here doing a show. I'm like George Washington at Valley Forge. Can you dig that sucker? The show must go on. The cause. To the cause. Let me see your shoes. No. They didn't have shoes. Who didn't have shoes? George Washington's men at Valley Forge. How did they walk on the snow? <laughs> exactly. They must have got sick. Exactly. It was hard times, baby. Hard times. You know what? I guess they're more... If a Republican... If George w uh, Washington were a Republican... There would have been no Revolutionary War, and there certainly would have never been a Valley Forge. No, because Republicans love monarchies. But they also love uh, King George. Not right? hard times. They can't deal with them. Well, you know, okay? uh, Abraham Lincoln, a Republican, would be considered too way too far to the left today. Today, yes. Yeah. I think in some ways uh, Richard Nixon and, and Ronald Reagan would be too far to the left today, even though they, they have him as a patron saint, uh, well, Ronald yes. Reagan. Uh, Richard Nixon wanted to put through an annual income for uh, people in the United States. No, well he... Where are you going to get a Republican to do that today? Richard Milhouse Nixon came from a, uh, a humble... Quaker. A humble fa uh, uh, family. He wasn't born wealthy. He yeah. uh, they struggled. And he resented that. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. But I'm just saying it. It, it created yeah. the um, the personality that and the character that was uh, Richard Nixon. Now, uh, Jimmy Carter. Um, I tell you, that guy is. He's so amazing. His, his hometown of Plains, Georgia, he is, he has installed, <clears throat> he has arranged it to, uh, to, for Plains, Georgia to have um, a large amount of solar panels and, and he, he, it's almost, it's getting close to being um, sufficient, self-sufficient. Self -sufficient. Town of Plains, Georgia is, I think it's more than 50% self-sufficient already because of uh, the first set of uh, solar panels. That I'm, I'm assuming the solar pa panels are on some of his farm acreage, so where there's no, nothing to stop the sun from shining, you know. But, uh, and he, he helps with the Habitats of Humanity building homes. Oh, yeah. At his age, he's doing all this. Mm -hmm. But... If he could use Plains, Georgia, as a prototype, not that not that you need one because Germany's doing it already, you know. Mm -hmm. They're closing in on, on being fossil fuel free. But I mean, as far as an American American community, an American town, that would be the prototype for the whole country. Mm. You know, hopefully he'll get it done. Well, he's still uh, alive because mm -hmm. he is quite old. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all right, we got we got some time. I am writing in reference to Nordstrom's decision 
to cancel Ivanka Trump's line of fashion from its stores. What, what does this person care? Is he related to Ivanka? I have no idea. All right. I have great doubt that this is based on poor sales and financial loss, but to appease any customer who is angry over Donald Trump's presidency. The timing is too coincidental in my view. This is an insult to any woman in the workforce who may be judged by a family member. I am not an activist, but feel strongly in the importance of being heard when issues concerning honesty, fairness, and integrity are impugned. For this reason, I have returned my Nordstrom credit card to its corporate headquarters with an explanation. I applaud the stores who have the courage not to follow Nordstrom's decision. Well, the Trump family, the Trump kids and wife did not waste any time trying to use the Trump presidency in, 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 in sales of merchandise. Well, they, indeed, that is the problem. They, they jumped right on the opportunity. Um, yeah. I am tired of being called a sore loser. Although I supported Hillary Clinton, oh God, I have many friends who were and are Donald Trump supporters. Oh, too many Americans want that establishment politics. They don't want to let go. I have only asked that they pay attention to Trump's actions. Just because I disagree with practically every decision and appointment he has made to date does not make me a sore loser or a crybaby. I am a patriotic American who believes in our Constitution and our laws. I believe in the American dream and in the innate goodness of his people. American dream, huh? If anything, you can probably label me an optimist and naive. A fool. I am depressed and outraged by much of the news. And I have participated in my government by making calls and marching in protests. I acknowledge the fact that the Democrats lost the 2016 election, but that doesn't mean I am willing to sit back and shrug. We should all, Trump supporters and Trump critics, be paying attention. Yeah, well, in order to pay attention, you have to be conscious. You got to be awake. You have to have brain cells that are working, which is lacking in America. How are you feeling here, Dr. Bill, so far in the show? Pretty good. All right, I'm that's okay. Good to, that's good to hear. Um, I just want to say that, you know, the next holiday will be St. Patrick's Day, I believe. And uh, I would like to say for the very best in Irish imports, go to XavierGifts.com, spell with an X, XavierGifts.com, and tell and tell management Patty Papa. that, that Mega Life James from Mega Life 21 has sent you. All right. And my greetings to Patty and her family, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Change of pace. Tomato paste. I am 68 years old. My husband is 80. I just found out he is involved with a 40 year old woman. No, she's a spring chicken to him, right? Yeah. I guess. He says it is not an affair because they haven't actually had sex. No, he's, he's probably uh, like Anna Nicole Smith was when, when she was alive with the old geezer, the billionaire. He has money, I bet. I don't know what to do. Can you help me? You give him, you'll probably give him a heart attack in bed. Uh. Here is Jean Phillips answer. She has the Dear Abby column now. 
Oh, they kept the uh, the Abbey, yes. even though the original Abigail was a Van Buren. Yeah, is is uh, taking the dirt sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Abigail Van Buren. Okay. Your husband may not be having an affair in the physical sense, but he is having an emotional affair. He may be flattered by the attention he's receiving from a younger woman, or he may think think he's actually in love with her. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Whether she is in love with him is open to question. Yeah, he's in lust, I think. If there's any lust left in an old geezer like that. However, if your husband is giving her money, <laughs> you might have an argument that he is being manipulated. Yes, by a gold digger. Which could, could qualify as elder abuse. Oh... I think that's an excellent uh, idea if they could do that legally. It is el elderly abuse of the elderly. Yes, it is. Like like scammers who call up senior citizens and try to dupe them out of their money. Mm -hmm. Remember too, if you are a longtime wife in a community property state, half of the assets acquired during your marriage are yours. Yeah. I think California's like that. If he doesn't agree to end the relationship, this is something you might want to discuss with a lawyer. Yeah. Just tell him uh, that, uh, God, I, have your, I have your little raisin balls on a chopping block, my good man. Well, um, Yes, it is uh, taking advantage of the elderly, without a doubt. And um, uh, gold digging is, is a form of uh, glorified prostitution. Huh? I mean, it is. It is, you know. Um, uh, <coughs> I know um, I have a couple relatives that married some dopey looking guy uh, that is uh, below them in appearance and uh, I am sure it is because of their job, their career, their income. Let's get right to the point. Their income that they uh, they uh, sunk that uh, that bass fishing hook right into their mouth and reeled them in. Dear Abby, my seven-year-old daughter Jessie has a best friend who lives next door. The neighbor, Lori, has an older brother, Jason, who is 13. Recently, Jesse played at Lori's house. And when she came home, she told me Jason had said some nasty things to her. Oh, really? When I asked what they were, she told me that one time mm -hmm. Jason told her to pull down her underwear. Mm. And another time he told her to pull down his pants. He had a chubby? And do something that can't be mentioned in a family newspaper. Okay. He didn't run it. Well, the, the, she she explained it. She explained it well enough. Yeah. Well, I'm leaving this explanation to you because I'm not reading hers. Oh, <laughs> chubby. Uh, my my uh, a friend of mine said that he likes women with a chubby. Uh, these are not women. These are kids. Oh, kids. How old? The girl's only seven. How old is the the, the guy? The kid is uh, thirteen. Oh, they're, they're, they're children. Yeah, and they weren't playing school. Man, what a bunch of hoodlums they are today, these, these, <laughs> these boys. Well, 13 is considered uh, puberty. Puberty. Uh, puberty. 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 Yeah, where? Down in uh, uh, Wolf County, Kentucky, maybe. Yeah, but when I was 12, I, I, I had a constant erection in school. Erections have nothing to do with the law. 
No, no. The, well, I was a kid. I was 12. Well? I was 12. I was a minor. And you were looking for something, what? And I grabbed uh, my substitute, uh, one of my young teachers. See? By, by Donald, I did a Donald Trump to, with her, but I was, I was a kid. You grabbed her by the pussy. How much trouble can I get uh, for a kid doing a Donald Trump to his teacher? No, not too much. I didn't have the orange hair, I just, you know. I don't think he, he didn't have the orange hair either. Once upon a time. Don't you see how he's younger pictures? I thought it was his hair. Hell no! Oh, he's he made it orange. Dark hair. Yeah, that's only recent. And I think the more people complained about it, the more he kept it. Yeah. Like Barbara Streisand never getting a nose job. Hey, when the hell are you going to, with all your money, when the hell are you going to get a nose job? And I guess she, uh, um, as obstinate and the pain in the ass and stubborn as she probably is, she decided, I'm not going to get one, because you said so. Well, got a big honker. It doesn't seem to interfere with her making a living and etc. So. Of course not. Of course you it know. doesn't. But it's a, but it's a dis disproportionate to one's faccia. To uh, one's face. Ta, 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 ta. How about Jimmy Durante? Jimmy Durante, or, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, uh, St. Jude's Hospital, the, the, the guy. Danny Thomas. Danny Thomas. What about, remember Al Molinaro? Oh, oh my God, yeah. The thing was huge at Hong Jesus. And the list goes on and on. <laughs> you know, oh. you, you, uh, if you ask them to look at the ceiling, they, they become a two-car garage. The nose is so big. In yeah. spite of imper imperfections, some people overcome them all. Well, they should, uh, if they have children with big schnozolas, they should pay a, a big schnozola tax for bringing more big nosed people into the world. Oh boy. Okay. All right, Doc. I think it's time for a break for lunch. I just want to say uh, thank you to our uh, our very own. Uh, director of IT for Mega Life 21, Santa Tank. I salute Santa Tank for his new animation that you will see now, the third animation that I use for this show, Progressive Discussions. Yeah. And it's brand new and it's, it's really beautiful. Great job, Santa Tank. I salute you. I also salute. Um, Oh, I did that already. Yes, XavierGifts.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Patty from XavierGifts.com, the finest in Irish imports. You will now see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Simply hit the pause button, read and learn, and follow by promo. And then we'll see you for the balance of this show, Progressive Discussions. Mm -hmm. That's right. George Washington of Valley Forge. Mm -hmm. I got a recovering eyeball and I'm still doing the show. Dedication, man. Dedication. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, man? Hey, you know man. What I mean? Can you dig that sucker? Yeah.
is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay. We're back. Actually, we're back. You see me talking and sitting in my on my throne here. Okay. Seven lucky bells for the balance of progressive discussions. President's Day weekend. I'm sure the, uh, the retailers uh, love that. I'm, I'm sure they're the ones that set up President's Day to fall on a Monday. <clears throat> what they did was they converted... It was Ronald Reagan. He did that, huh? Oh. He did it so you wouldn't have so many vacations. Okay? Oh, you mean there the, were two of them in it? You know, yeah, there was uh, Lincoln's birthday and George Washington's birthday. Where, ain't MLK in here too or something? There's Martin Luther King. 
Uh -huh. But okay. by all of these, uh, I call them, um, what should we call them? National holidays? Miscellaneous holidays? Federal. They're not federal. Re federal holidays. But we got mail the other day, last Monday. See, they put them on a weekend so you'd have a three-day weekend. They put them on a Monday. Well, actually... They used to fall on any day. Yeah. Well, know? the three-day weekend is is pretty nice. If you work in an office, let's say, or uh, <coughs> you have a job where, you know, that does that. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. it's nice to have a three-day weekend. Um, I remember when I was much younger, I used to hit the clubs and the, oh, the bars used to be really hopping. Not just Friday and Saturday, but Sunday night also, because Monday people had off. I remember that. Actually, hairdressers, uh, you know, salons, barbershops, they, they're usually closed on a Monday. Sunday, mm -hmm. Monday is their weekend because they're, they're open on Saturday. Because they have to be, you know. Anyway. A video of me questioning Representative Diane Black, Republican, Tennessee, about how her party will replace the Affordable Care Act went viral on Friday. I had gone to her town hall meeting on Thursday near my home to ask what the poor and the sick would do once they are left without the law's protections. The next night I had the really weird experience of seeing myself on national television and the even weirder experience of hearing and reading other people's interpretation of my own words. <laughs> my town hall question has been described as a Christian defense of Obamacare. Well, Obamacare um, uh, is more Christian than any, anything a Republican would do. And an impassioned case for the ACA's individual mandate. But the truth is that I do not actually believe that the ACA is the best way to insure people. In fact, I am ashamed and afraid that this video might have done more harm than good. In my view, Christians shouldn't be satisfied with health care policy that leaves anyone out, especially those who need care most, but can't afford it the least. Christians should support a universal single-payer plan. Of I, course! I know what it's like to need a hand. I grew up on an Appalachian hillside in a run-down trailer home. Not even a cabin? With my mom. I could picture a lovely cabin with a big hearth, fireplace, wood-burning stove, but a trailer? And two siblings. Oh. My mom was orphaned at a very young age, and we had no other family to help us. So we relied almost exclusively on government assistance to survive. We were industrious and thrifty, like the majority of people receiving government assistance yeah. who are working to barely get by. Y your whole life is one big budget. Growing up, I was surrounded by Christians whose politics informed their faith, not the other way around. Conservatives who expect poor churches and charities to look after their poor congregations while wealthy people live in luxury. They only have so much money, the churches, they can't do it, they can't get the job done. But my mom cared about politics, especially issues affecting the working class. You notice how all these Republican politicians tend to be from the southern states? Didn't you ever look at the campaign map and see all the red area? They're all, they're all in Dixieland. Jesus. They're all in Dixieland. <laughs> She used to tell us that Jesus didn't lie, just love the poor. He loved them more. And he helped them. I've always carried that message with me, and I've paid attention 
to politics on and off over the years. And he commanded the rich to help and give to the poor. But how much did he tell them to give? A lot more than, than what uh, our system does now. All. Command it all. You, you shouldn't. Uh, if you uh, have two coats, give them to the poor. Well, you yeah, but then you become poor, so then you need a coat. But you, in the Another rich, word. in some way, shape, or form, have been blessed. So you're going to make it back because they say so. Well, yeah, whatever. You in know. other words, they're tithing. But uh, they're yeah. tithing. They're tithing. Well, God is definitely. <laughs> Definitely much closer to socialism than uh, than Republic, conservative Republicans are, without a doubt. I was unhappy with the Bush administration. But when Barack Obama won the election in 2008, I assumed things would look up. Well, they would if he didn't get obstructed constantly from the Republican Congress. And I stopped paying attention. I worked harder, I went to school, and did my best to give back to my community as a high school teacher. Something I felt I had to do as a Christian. But this election startled me out of my complacency. I followed the Democratic primary closely. I cast my vote for Hillary Clinton in the general. Oh, I was yeah. horrified by the outcome. Oh, you're a real Christian. Oh, that's right. The South... Uh the South went for Hillary Clinton, I think, because her, her husband is a Southern boy. Southern boy. That's why I think the South went for Hillary. Yeah. I realize that if people of faith want a moral government, we can't rely on people who call themselves Christians to build one for us. No, our forefathers had an outstanding reason for keeping church and state separated. We have to do it ourselves. That's why I went to speak to my representative directly. When I got up to speak to Black, I was nervous. My question came out a little jumbled. And I did end up making a faith-based argument for the individual mandate portion of the ACA. I was simply trying to point out that the hypocrisy of Republican politicians who claim to be Christians and yet time and time again advocate for policies that hurt people. Republicans' refusal to expand the Medicaid component of the ACA in various states solely in the name of politics punished some of our nation's poorest and likely led to thousands of untimely deaths. refusing to expand Medicaid and threatening to place vulnerable people into high-risk insurance pools are wrong, in my view, because Christianity calls on us to look after the weakest and the neediest of people. If I had a chance to address our leaders directly again, I would say this. Christianity demands that we make sure all people have health coverage. In other words, yes, I would have focused on the Christian case for universal single-payer health insurance. As a right. Health care for all as a right. Like education as a right. Which would protect all Americans. Not just rich kids getting a good education. And if Republicans want to campaign as Christians, they should lead the way. Switching to single-payer would not be easy. Perhaps the hardest part of the reorganization of our health care system to single-payer would be asking physicians to make much less money than they do now. But the directive in Luke 12, 48 states, Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. But you can't mix religion and politics because religion has not been proven. Oh, why is this person so hung up on 
who who calls himself a Christian and who doesn't? I mean, it, 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 no religion is proven. If I have a debate with a person who calls himself a Christian. Now what does that mean in the po po I am then allowed to use Christian yes. theology yes. and stuff to bunk yes. or debunk Na right. his right. nonsense. Yes, absolutely correct. But when and that, that doesn't mean I'm sharing them. No, but, but when that evangelical conservative Republican is keeps on bringing up Christianity in terms of politics, political decisions, what I'm saying is it's it's ludicrous because religion cannot, has not and cannot be proven uh, for all we know. That is correct, but as it is today, yeah, they use it to make laws, which is insane, insane. Okay. Hey, for all we know, if you're going to be an independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind, for all we know, the planet Earth and the human race might be one big, big, gigantic, extraterrestrial experiment. And the angels were actually extraterrestrials flying around. You know, I mean, we don't know. So keep it out of politics. It's okay to have a, f a belief, you know, freedom of religion, but keep it out of politics. And um, Republicans like to use the Constitution and Christianity as a front. They wrap themselves in a flag and hold the Bible in one hand. And drive a Chevrolet. Right, as they're picking your pocket with, with the other hand, as they're, as they're uh, screwing you. They, they love the, the big distractions. They love to distract They're screwing you the with people. their communism. Huh? Communism. Who? The Christians. What the hell do you think tithing is? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the counterfeit Christians on the right that's wing. That's what I'm saying. Right wing. No, they don't like communism. But that's what tithing is. No, their tithing is stealing. Wait yeah, a minute. from one person, but then they give it to themselves so they don't have to work. Joel Osteen don't have to work. Well, he's not a real... Whoever said he was a real Christian. Doesn't matter. I'm saying how they do it. He, he's using the word tithe... They're, they're perverting the word tithe, the and meaning of use, tithing. And then they use the tax laws to keep it all. That's another thing. That's well, another thing, yeah. They keep it all. It's like, it's like the, uh, the banner that you saw before. Mo the mother's explaining to her daughter, you know, the daughter says, what's, Mommy, what's trickle-down economics? He says, she says, well... Uh, all the money first goes <clears throat> to the CEO on top, and uh, and the girl says, "Well, then, then what happens?" She says, "That's it." Mother says, "That's it. <laughs> That's it. Goes to the top. Money goes to the top. That's it. No trickle. No. And from him, to whom they entrusted much, they will demand more. With what is left of the minute of fame that I have been given." I feel compelled to ask for forgiveness for not using my belief system to advocate more clearly for what I think is the best thing to do. Hey, we had some very good readings for this week's show, I, I must say. Even though I'm not feeling as uh, fit as a fiddle like I normally am. I think the show is going quite well. For those of you that want to mock and criticize, <coughs> I have an itch in the center of my forehead for it. Excuse me. Actually, it's such a big itch, I need two fingers. Hold on. Ah, jeez. Yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like uh, unfair put-downs that of matters that are not important. You know what I mean? At least... Stick to the content of the show. Debate with facts. Don't try to just, don't try to get under people's skin with what they call keyboard courage. You know, talking shit as you're pushing the buttons. Researchers exploring the ocean's deepest reaches 
are accustomed to seeing oddities from fish as fragile as tissue paper to translucent sea cucumbers. Yeah, could you imagine how does a fish thrive in an environment with so much water pressure on all sides? I'm talking about the depths of the ocean. But even veteran deep water scientists were shocked by the latest discovery at the very bottom of the sea. Toxic pollution and lots of it. Oh, yeah, that is very true, unfortunately. Yeah. Tiny, shrimp-like crustaceans living in the Mariana Trench, one of the world's most remote habitats, are laced with staggering levels of industrial chemicals, according to a new study. Even there, man's pollution has reached. Scientists found that some of the Mariana crustaceans are more contaminated with harmful pollutants called PCBs uh -oh. than crabs living in waters fed by one of China's most polluted rivers. The scientists found high levels of flame retardants in the bodies of similar crustaceans living in the Karam Karmadec Trench, the world's fifth deepest and more than 4,000 miles from the Mariana Trench. Humans have left the footprints in the deepest places of the world. Oh boy. Wherever humans um, go, explore, they, they destroy. Not only are the pollutants in every single sample, regardless of species, depth, and trench, whatever the concentrations are extraordinarily high. That was a big surprise. Anything that lives in the Mariana Trench, the world's deepest at more than six miles, and other underwater gashes in the Earth's surface is a tough customer. It must thrive in complete darkness and under crushing pressures of seven tons per square inch. That's what I was saying before. It's like, it's more miraculous than a bumblebee being able to fly. Its wings are too small for its body weight, but it flies anyway. But this is even more incredible. In these conditions, the shrimp-like scavengers, called amphipods, like a krill almost, thrive by snatching any bit of food that floats by. But that voracity can backfire. The contaminants in the amphipods' bodies probably came from the food they ate. The scientists wrote in this week's Nature, Ecology, and Evolution. The researchers did not trace the contaminants to their origins. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. No, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, here we go. Here we go. What do we got? This might be the last. It's a fairly large one. Yeah, I have a feeling it will be the last reading for this week's president. Congress yeah. on Wednesday. Sent President Donald Trump legislation blocking an Obama-era rule <sighs> designed to keep guns out of the hands of certain mentally disabled people. Why Republicans want them to have firearms? That's right. Uh, you, uh, that, that, that there'll be more. They're helping the disabled, aren't they? Then they'll, they'll then there'll be more shootings. Yeah, but they're helping the disabled. To to kill innocent people. Yeah. But they're helping them. Well, so, obviously. So firing. Uh, if you're mentally ill, you can get a gun. So so shooting innocent uh, 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 humans 
with a gun is like uh, is therapy for the mentally ill. I think Ronald Reagan l uh, let them all loose at, out of the mental institutions uh, way back when they became the homeless. On a vote of 57 to 43, the Senate backed the resolution. Just one of several early steps by the Republican-led Congress to undo regulations implemented by former President Barack Obama. Undo. Undo would sound like Andouille sausage. The House, which I love, had passed the measure earlier this year. The White House has signaled Trump will sign the legislation. The Obama rule would have prevented an estimated 75,000 people with mental disorders from being able to purchase a firearm. <laughs> That's like, um, like a hardened criminal doing like a few decades in, in prison and then they, they finally get out and, and, they, and they say, oh sure, you can buy all the guns you want now. It's your right. That's right. It's the 22nd Amendment. <laughs> it was crafted as part of Obama's efforts to strengthen the federal background check system in the wake of the 2012 massacre of 20 young students and six staff at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown. Hey, Obama really never, never took away their guns. Adam Lanza, a 20-year-old man with a variety of impairments, including Asperger's Syndrome, Blackjack Lanza, and Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, shot and killed his mommy at their home, and then went to school where he killed the students, adults, and himself. Okay, so, all right, so his right to bear arms, no matter what, no matter what, he had it and uh, innocent people died. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that makes a lot of sense, Republicans, a lot of sense. The Obama administration rule required the Social Security Administration to send in the names of beneficiaries with mental impairments who also have a third party manage their benefits. Why stop at guns? Let the mentally ill be able to buy a, a, a rocket launcher, uh, a shoulder held bazooka, rocket launchers. Uh, uh, um, teach them how to build little baby nukes, you know, that, that fit in a lunchbox, a little, little nuclear device. Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on. Is this like... But lawmakers, with the backing of the National Rifle Association and advocacy groups for the disabled, opposed the regulation <laughs> and encouraged Congress to undertake a rarely successful process designed to void regulations that Congress takes issue with. They, they don't want you to discriminate against the mentally disabled by having regulations and <clears throat> in other words if, if if they if they get tired of their of their water gun you should they should be able to buy an automatic weapon yeah <laughs> with a Republican ally in the White House oh, boy, is that... the GOP has moved aggressively on several fronts to rescind some of Obama administration's final regulations on the environment. Financial reporting and now guns. Under an expedited process established, established through the Congressional Review Act, a regulation is made invalid Excuse me. when a simple majority of both chambers pass a joint resolution of disapproval and the President signs it. Senator Charles Grassley, a Republican of Iowa, spearheaded the repeal effort and said the regulation unfairly stigmatizes the disabled. 
and infringes on their constitutional right to bear arms. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Oh. He said <laughs> that the mental disorders covered through the regulation are filled with vague characteristics that do not fit into the federal mentally defective standard. <laughs> you discriminate against me. I can't buy a, 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 a what is it? AR-15. I can't buy an AR-15. <laughs> Prohibiting someone from buying or owning a gun. Grassley cited eating and sleep disorders as examples of illness that could allow a beneficiary to be reported to the background system if they also have a third party to manage their benefits. Hey, don't you take away a, a, a person's uh, CDL license to drive a tractor trailer if they have narcolepsy. You're discriminating against uh, narcoleptics. So they fall asleep at the wheel, but don't hurt their feelings. If a specific individual is likely to be violent due to the nature of a mental illness, then the government should have to prove it. Of course it's proven. Senator Chris Murphy, uh, Democrat, uh, Connecticut, said he didn't know how he could explain to his constituents that Congress was making it easier rather than harder for people with serious mental illness to have a gun. If you can't manage your own financial affairs, how can we expect you're going to be a responsible steward of a dangerous lethal firearm? Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, argued that anyone who thinks they are treated unfairly, can appeal, and are likely to win if they are not a danger to themselves or others. They don't even think about the innocent victims. They, they, don't, they don't think. That's the problem. They don't think. No, because they're, they're upholding the National Rifle Association. And the NRA really doesn't care about innocent victims either. No, right? they care about getting money in every year. From their constituents. Oh, gosh. Gun rights groups weren't the only organizations upset about the Obama administration's regulation. The ACLU criticized it. The ACLU said the rule advanced a harmful stereotype that people with mental disabilities, a vast, diverse group, are violent. More than a dozen advocacy groups for the disabled also opposed the Obama administration's regulation. The NNACP, the United States Conference of Mayors, National League of Cities supported the Social Security Administration's efforts. This heartless Resolution puts the most vulnerable Americans at risk, said Dan Gross, president of the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence. Make no mistake, this vote was really about deepening the gun industry's customer pool at the expense of those in danger and others. Oh well. Well, that was a perfect ending to a uh, uh. Uh, initial topic that we had about uh, just how insane <laughs> our government is, uh -huh. and uh, it was the icing on the cake, so to speak. Um, that's it. Hey, thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. I'm James P. Madonna, and... Uh, on behalf of the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, my co-host and mentor. Here. Um, Hi. Have a pleasant 
President's Day weekend. Enjoy yeah. the um, unseasonably warm February days. I mean, relatively warm. If you happen to be having them, like we are here in the Northeast. Bye bye. And for those that complain that I that I get I vacate my chair, go fuck yourselves. You know what I mean, man? What the hell do I expect? What the hell do I expect? What do you think, man? This has been a Mega Life 21 production.